This video is in debt and memory to all the Udyr mains in Season 10 who can no longer keep up the fight. Rest in peace, my brothers. <laughs> Jokes aside, let's go ahead and get started with this video, shall we? Let's go ahead and close the music. Alright guys, so here, this video has been long overdue. And the reason for this video is in Season 10, a lot of you guys have been coming to me saying that Udyr feels extremely weak and that you don't feel the impact that you felt before. A lot of old timers have come back and realized that the champion that they love doesn't feel right. So I wanted to go over a couple of things with you guys to give you all the information so you could have a better understanding about what's going on. So in Season 10, one of the biggest things that we feel is that we don't have impact in our games. This is due to a couple of reasons that a lot of people haven't really been talking about, but I did a little research for you guys, so we could all have it in one video. So, one of the things that made Udyr so strong in the past is the overall metagame of League of Legends. What I mean is that League as a game has adapted and evolved, and our champion hasn't. Back in the old day of League of Legends, there were items such as runes, mastery trees, and as well as the items that were built. Back in the old days, champions in the mid lane as mages did not get items like Morellicon giving Grievous Wounds on spells. They didn't get Hexet Gunblade giving them spell vamp. They didn't get, you know, items that gave a lot of variety of, you know, gameplay. There was Zonia's Hourglass was an item you built situationally. What we have what we had back then was item every mage would build Rod of Ages, giving them raw stats that they had to scale into the mid game to get the full value of. They built Death Cap to just enhance their damage even further. They built Void Staff to penetrate. ADCs built IE, Phantom Dancer, which just gave crit, and at one time it, only gave, it also gave some dodge chance too. But it gave crit damage, and that was it. There was nothing unique. Every ADC built IE, Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirster, which only gave 100 AD and 25% lifesteal and could be stacked. An armor penetration item and then a defensive item to protect themselves. 100% crit chance was just not existing. It wasn't something that was part of old League of Legends. And in those item-driven stat phases of, the, of League of Legends, Udyr as a champion thrived. Because in the jungle, champions had to be uniquely designed to fall function in the jungle as the only item, Wiggle's Lantern, had only a 20% chance to randomly proc a huge burst damage to make jungle clear effective. To add on that, why you guys feel like Phoenix Dance feels so weak is in the current jungle, three of the seven, no, actually, let's see, three on top, three on the eight. There's eight camps, but seven generally, including one Scuttle. Three to four, if Scuttle, if you want to count Scuttle, are single target jungle camps. In the old jungle, there was none. Blue buff, red buff, the three monster camps all had AoE monsters. They had multiple monsters that Phoenix Ants thrived in, allowing Phoenix Udyr to excel above any other jungler on his AoE clear, his speed, since he alone came with natural t attack speed, and ruining up for attack speed meant that you were giving up scaling stats while Udyr benefited greatly from attack speed from his runes. Add on top of that, that Phoenix Udyr had access to innate movement speed through his quintessences by getting 4.5%, which is again another bonus to Udyr. These old systems thrived on the stat checking champion that is Udyr. Now, Udyr as a champion functions based on his ability to be a stat check champion. He survived by having the core identity of he will beat you if his stats are greater than yours via his items or his levels, and his weakness was his inability to get on top of you. With champions not having many options for mobility from the mastery tree, and many champions choosing to opt into quintessences that help their laning phase, that left Udyr as a sole survivor of high mobility in the early game, and able to use utilize items like Triforce, which gave critical strike and movement speed early, to really get on top of his targets. That has all changed with the metagame into Season 10. As the game grew, the item diversity also grew. Items that, no, that didn't exist in the past, such as Storm Razor, now gave ADC champions a way to deny champions to get close to them. However, note that these items were built to 
govern the champions that are most commonly seen in the current meta. Champions like Yasuo, Echo, Pike, champions who a little bit of slow would disable them for a temporary time, allowing a ADC to reposition with their fleet of footwork or another item, or to get behind their supports. For Udyr, it is a death sentence, not allowing us to get on top of these targets. Another big change is that champions like Jin, Jin is able to completely deny us. And the funny part is, guys, that Jin is a champion has a much greater mobility than us from the start of the game. If Jin is able to get a critical strike, he actually gets a movement speed buff. Let me go ahead and pull it on screen for you guys. Jin, as an ADC, gets a much stronger movement speed buff than us. Let's see, we at level 1, we get 15%. So he only needs 10% critical strike chance. And that's not, there's just critical strike chance. We're not counting bonus attack speed or bonus attack damage. Just 10%. Critical strike, no, it was 10% attack speed. Just 10 point, 10 plus 10 of this. Just a little bit of attack speed, bonus attack damage, or critical strike. And he will outrun us with just his passive. Udyr, as a champion, has not evolved. Because the tools that enemy champions have to get away from us has evolved away from us. And unfortunately, we haven't kept up with the times. Now, here's the thing, guys. A lot of you. A lot of you. you know this, by the way. Yeah, no. We're not. We're not. No. We're not even talking about that. That's a rumor, guys. If you saw that clip, that, that's a rumor. Udyr is not slated for a rework. That post has no sources. Do not trust it. But, guys, in the Udyr Reddits, I see almost weekly, and sometimes more often, here is my latest Udyr rework. And I'm going to hate to bring some sad news to you guys. It's not coming. It's not coming for some time. So, why isn't it coming? The core problem is, and from Riot's point of view, and you guys have to understand, this is a fair business model sense, but also statistics. Udyr as a champion is not a current or relevant need of either a buff or a full-on video game update. In regards to a buff, a lot of you guys say if Udyr had this, he would be viable. If Udyr had tenacity on his E, if he had more movement speed. And trust me, even I feel like that sometimes. So don't get me wrong on that. But the stats don't lie, guys. Throughout all ranks in NA, 51%. Let's go to Diamond, 50, uh, 55% versus all champions. Guys, like, you know, I could pick. You know, let's go to the world, 51% Diamond, 50% Platinum. All ranks, 50%. Uh, let's go back to NA. Let's go to uh, Gold, 50% 50, 50 Platinum, 49%. Not Again, it's not bad. And there's the sad part about it. You know, they say small sample size. Let's go back to the old patch. 48. That's actually somewhat bad. But again, 48, 51, 51. And again, this is and this is consistent from different servers. 49, 50%. Like, throughout the world, Udyr hovers at 50%. So what this means is that it, while his kit is just very weak... It's not holding back a game. A champion that does suffer is Sejuani. Here we have 46%, 47%, 48%, 49 You know, the lower we go, the higher, it, the lesser our impact hurts. Oops. We, there we go. Back to back. You know, we go to Korea. 50%, 50 You know, in lower ELO, she seems to hover well, but the higher she goes, she, her win rate drops to a terrible problem. So Sejuani is more needing of a buff than Udyr, and if you give a buff to Udyr as a stat check based champion, he will become a problem in low elo, which would require Riot to nerf him. Unfortunately, guys, as long as Udyr's stats are the way they are, and he's a stat check champion, giving him a raw number buff will result in low elos having a huge problem punishing this simple champion. The main problem is that Udyr lacks skill expression, similar to champions like Garen, where the skill expression mitigated his usefulness in high elo, 
but the raw base, simplicity of his kit, on top of the raw stat wall that is his kit, keeps his low elo usage very powerful, thus causing a lot of you guys to feel that problem. Now, a lot of you guys then jump on and say, well, why don't we get a rework? Why, what's stopping Riot from a rework? Well, while I pull up the stats, I'm going to play a couple clips for you guys. So you guys can unfortunately hear from this, I believe, is Riot August. Please do understand that these video, these clips were taking on his stream. So if you definitely want to check him out, he's a great guy. But understand that this is not a official, official word from Riot. But it's honestly something that a lot of us have been thinking. And the other one, which is pretty much the same thing, but... If the clips didn't come out well, I will be including them in the link below. But to sum it up, Udyr's kit lacks the core issues that Riot can't make a problem a fix for. Udyr as a champion would require more skins to be created for the current skins he has. So off his base skin, four. Off of his two old skins, that's 12. Then we add Dragon Oracle, that's 20. Then we add Spirit Guard. And if we are going to be nice and say Spirit Guard needs two assets for each form, that is 28. 28 skins is more than Lux has if you count every form of elements as Lux apart. And let's be honest, guys. Dragon Oracle Udyr was probably Riot's way of testing the ground and see how much money an Udyr skin can make. And let's be honest, I can highly doubt that skin sold that well. So the in time investment of Udyr to make all the art assets he would need to survive and thrive while keep respecting each of his skins is not worth it to Riot. They don't make money on Udyr. Udyr, as he is right now, just would not be a good financial investment. They'd have to spend a lot of art asset resources to fix him. And then they have to make an ult another ultimate skin that cannot they can't guarantee on return on investment. Because guys, here's the truth of the matter. The amount of resources Udyr would need to make him a champion in 2020 would simply be unfathomable. It wouldn't start. Blech, I hate that word, you know. It wouldn't be realistic to think that they're going to make a profit. So where is the value for a company as Riot to really try to invest in Udyr when it would cost so much money and so much resources that they can't even guarantee a um, turnaround? If it was Lux, I guarantee it would be a great investment because her skins sell like hotcakes. But for us, that's simply not the case. However, guys, all doom and gloom aside, there is an answer for you. And what you can do in the current season. Guys, understand that in this meta, no. In this meta, there are options. There are ways for you to still be adaptable. And a lot of you guys, I see get stuck in your own roots. You get stuck playing the same builds you're stuck on phase rush from seasons ago you're stuck on pta every single game and you guys have got to understand that if you truly want to improve you have to adapt both your gameplay style and as well as well how you play the game now understand that in league of legends the only way you're going to improve is if you really just focus on, you know, getting better. If you don't sit around and just wait for something to happen, wait for Riot to solve the problem for you, you can improve. So one of the things I want to go ahead and talk about is a certain viewer of mine, Rosh House, who never before he met me, before he met me, he was stuck in gold four and gold three. So right here, you can see he was hovering gold four, top gold three, back to gold four, and he wasn't climbing anywhere. On March 20th, he came to my channel, he watched my build, 
And then he started using my build. In a single month, look how high he climbed. A full, he went from gold 4 to plat 4 in a month's time. With straight, steady improvement. And all he did, all he did, guys, was he took my build and started running it every single game. He did not sit, he, he was using an old build. He was using a build that just didn't work for him anymore. He was using Warrior Triforce, and at that point, he said, you know what? I want to try something different. He decided he no longer wanted to run the same build game in and game out. He decided to adapt. He went in 60, 59 games, 42 wins, and 17 losses. And all he did was adjust his build. And the point I'm trying to make to you guys is that you can do the same thing. There are... Plenty of builds out of New Year. That's what we love about his versatility to me is one of the core things that I want Riot to take forward into his rework. I'm honest, I'm be honest, guys. I don't care about his stance gameplay. I don't care about his auto attack based gameplay. I care about the fact that this champion can be everything to all of us. He can be the phase rush U to your top. He could be the John Deere classic that a lot of you love. He can be a split pusher. He can be a damage threat. He can be a full tank. He can be what we want him to be. The only thing we wish we could want him to be right now is viable. So, guys, let go of the memes that really hold you back. Because in the end of the day, a lot of those memes were built around a time that Udyr flourished with the high mobility from items and the raw stat checking he could do. And that's just not what League of Legends is today. Adapt your builds and be open-minded to the builds that, you know, other people are going to be researching. And I'm going to be open to them. So follow my content. Use my Mobifier guide. There, I will be keeping this more up-to-date and trying to give you guys the best items that I can find to give you that information you need to be successful. And especially as yourselves. Guys, come to me and bring me your builds. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the Discord. Also the link down below. Let me know the builds that you guys discover, because the Medier Staircase build that a lot of you guys have been getting a lot of success from came when Udyr was perfectly fine going full damage, but it was a build I discovered, and now a lot of people around the world use it. Even in Korea, they use a variation of the build, where they take Cinderhawk and replace it with Blood Razor. I tried it, not me, but you know what? If it works for them, power to them. Find what works for you, and when it doesn't work, come discuss it with the rest of us. And we can help you improve. Guys, on a final message, the main thing I'm trying to get all over is Udyr is in a bad spot. He is in a bad spot right now. We want him to be viable. But it's not going to always be the case. It is our job to handle what we have now and, and encourage each other. Push each other to want more. Discover more. And to stop just beating up. No, guys, I'm tired of hearing, Udyr's bad, don't play this champion. Because that's the last thing I want to tell anybody. I want you to enjoy this champion. Because the more of us that enjoy it, the more likely that Riot's going to see that there is some kind of potential in our champion. So, guys, let me know your feelings about Season 10. Where do you where do you fall in? Where do you think that, you know what, this is what I love about Udyr. This is what I want to see him. Because you guys are spending almost, what, 20 minutes listening to me rant? I want to know what you guys think about Udyr. Do you feel that my points are valid? Do you feel that I maybe missed something? Is there a build that you really like right now? Or is there something that you really just feel like, hey, you know what? This is the core. This is what Udyr is to me. Is the bear stance, the bear mauling essential to you? You say, you know what, right? This is something I want to have. Is Phoenix Dance something that you say, you know, I really would love to see Phoenix Dance or percentile damage, right? I would really love to see that, by the way. What do you want to happen? Because the more you make your voice heard, the more we communicate, the stronger our community will be. Well, princesses, that's all I have for you right now. And hopefully we can have more videos where we can talk about how we can improve Udyr with the historic state we're in. Don't let rumors give you false hope, guys. And as always, may the sun... Be always shining for you. Chowder.